Good evening. How are you doing? I hope you've had a good break over Christmas and uh, New Year. I know a lot of you uh, stopped meeting and took a break over this past one month. But I really hope while you took a break from your weekly event, uh, from your weekly meeting, you didn't really take a break from being in each other's lives because home group is not just a weekly event. Home group is, is an expression of uh, what we are called to be as a community, who we are as, as the people of, of God. Uh, so I, I, I really want to encourage you that if at all you take a break from your weekly meeting, don't, don't take a break from being in each other's lives. In this new year, we are starting a new series, and it's, it's, it's a, it's a seven-part series. Uh, I have entitled this series, uh, Improving Your Serve. Now, this series is based on the exposition of Philippians chapter 2, and uh, we're going to look at four large group studies, and you'll have three accountability night uh, uh, material. So it's overall, it's a seven-week series. Now, th there's threefold serve, uh, purpose behind this series. The first purpose I have behind this series is uh, there are a lot of people in our church who are not serving, who have not experienced the joy of serving, the satisfaction, the contentment, the joy that comes from serving. Uh, so I want people to experience that as they get encouraged through this series. I want people to serve and, and in return get the joy uh, of service. Uh, second, a lot of people have served and they have served to an extent that they have they're completely burnt out, completely burnt out. And as a result, they have taken a break from serving Christ. Now, I hope and pray that as we go through this series, people regain that, that zeal, that motivation, that awe of God so that it would help them serve. And, and the third reason, the third purpose behind uh, doing this series is so that people get uh, right understanding of service, what should be our motivation, attitude, perspective, how should we serve, etc., etc. So I have these three purposes behind doing this series. And uh, I want to look at our passage today. Our passage today is uh, Philippians chapter 2, verses uh, 1 to 4. So let's just look, look in our passage. Let me read from uh, verse 1, Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. Paul says, so if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, then complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. He then goes on to say, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. You see, in this passage, Paul is, is encouraging the Philippian church to be a united church, a church that loves one another. But Paul is saying that that is only possible if we are willing to serve one another. And that's what he says in verses 3 and 4. You see, it's the same with our marriage. Uh, if we want a, a loving and a, and a united marriage, then we need to serve one another. It's the same with the family. If we want a family that loves one another, if, if we want a family that is united, the family needs to serve one another. So in this larger unit, uh, chapter, chapter 2, verses 1 to 18, Paul gives us four ways, four ways that we can improve our serve. We can improve our service and in turn become a loving and a united church. He gives us four ways to improve ourselves. He talks about the motivation, he talks about the attitude, he talks about the perspective and how we can overcome hardships that come our way in service. The so first thing we will talk about tonight is, is having the right motivation. So the first way to improve our serve is to have the right motivation. You see, people serve Christ uh, with different motivations. Some people serve Christ uh, because of compassion. I mean, especially a city like Delhi and in India where you see a lot of poverty outside. I mean, you see men, women, young children, little children begging for food and money. You see labor trade. You see sex trafficking. 
and your heart is moved with compassion for those poor souls. And this is not a wrong motivation. This is a great motivation. In fact, Jesus has had a similar motivation. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, Jesus looked at the crowd and he said, he looked at the crowd and he saw them as, as sheep without shepherd, harassed, and his heart moved with compassion. So compassion is a great motivation, but if compassion is the only motivation you have, then the moment your object of, of compassion is removed from your eyes, you will lose that motivation. Some people serve Christ with the, with the motivation of obligation. You know, God has done so much for me. Christ died for me and I need to repay. I need to give it back to him because he did so much for me. I need to pay him back. Somehow I need to earn that. You see, in the movie Saving uh, Private uh, Ryan, uh, the rescue mission, Captain John Miller, Tom Hanks, uh, in his last mission when he's saving Private Ryan, he, he's injured and, and he's gasping for breath and he's about to die. And at that moment, he holds, uh, he holds uh, Private Ryan's hands and he, and he says, uh, earn this, earn it. He says, I've given up everything for you. Earn this, earn it. And then the movie goes on and at the end of the movie, you see Private Ryan standing in front of all these tombstones, all these graves of people who died in the battle fighting alongside him. And you see him leaning on one leg and he looks at them and he says, I hope I have earned it. I hope I have earned it. He spent his entire life trying to earn what his people did for, for him. He was trying to pay back or repay uh, the sacrifices they made for him. And some of us serve Christ because of that motivation. And some people serve Christ because of guilt. Everybody is, is serving Christ. And if, if, if I don't serve, I'd be the odd one out. I'd be standing all alone. And I need to serve. Otherwise, I mean, it, it makes you feel guilty. And you probably give an hour here, you give half an hour there. It's not doing any good to you or it's not doing any good to the church, but we are, you're doing it because you're guilty of not doing it. So what is the right motivation? Verse 3. Verse 3. Let's look at verse 3. Paul says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Paul gives you two negative motivations, and then he gives you the right motivation. Now, the first thing that Paul says, or the first word he uses, is the word selfish ambition. Now, the word selfish ambition in the New Testament is primarily used by Paul. Apart from Pauline usage of this word, it is used twice in the book of James. Now, in the book of James, James chapter 3, verse 16, James, by using this word, says that if this kind of motivation exists in our service or exists in community, then it brings law of disorder. It's the same word that Paul uses in Philippians chapter 1, verse 17, where he's talking about people preaching Christ out of ulterior motives. And, and, and James says that if you are serving with this motivation, it's going to bring disorder because this motivation is self-focused. And the second word that Paul uses in verse 3 is the word conceit. Now, this word conceit is, is a very powerful word. If you do a direct translation from Greek to English, this word means empty glory. Empty glory. What are you saying if, that, if, if your service of Christ, if the focus of your service is, is yourself, if the focus of you serving Christ is your own glory, is your own approval, is for you to look good in front of people, then it's going to be empty. It's without substance. It's weightless. And Paul says, don't do it. But then Paul talks about a third, a third motivation, and then he talks about a positive motivation. And that, then he says, in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Now the question is, where does this humility come from? A humility that considers others more important 
than you, a humility that considers others' needs more important than my own needs. Where do we get this kind of humility? And the answer is from the gospel. From the gospel. You see, Christ sacrificed his life for us. And, and, and the life we have received, the forgiveness we have received, the new life we have received, the eternal life we have received, it's, it's not meritorious. It's a result of an undeserved and undemanded uh, grace. We did not demand it. We did not deserve it. But Christ gave it to us. So whoever we are today, the life we have today is because of Christ. We did not deserve it. It's, it's a grace of of God. When we serve out of wrong motives, we serve either to glorify ourselves or to repay Christ. But Paul says our motivation should be the love of Christ. We need to serve because we have been first served by Christ. We need to serve. Our motivation to serve is that we have been served first by Christ. So the question you need to ask yourself, and, and as you study uh, in your group, is how are you serving Christ? What is your motivation of serving Christ? Are you serving Christ at all in your church? And if not, then serve, because you have been served, not because the church needs you, but because the most appropriate response to the grace of God is service. God bless.